As the music creator of Chinatown, I, in my opinion, Chinatown is basically a love story, and it related um, to you know about eighty years, three generation of two men. Um, their names are Xun Pun and Sai Hin. It's about two families. It takes place in 1961. It pivots in time back to the CPR, and it moves forward to our own time. It's about two families and their struggles to survive in Canada. And so what, what was interesting for me was to, to, to write about the world before the world that I knew, sort of the ground that I think in some ways that each successive wave of immigration, and in this case, Chinese immigration, Asian immigration, um, may not know about. I sang the, uh, the little arietta called, or at least I call it Kiefer Street, and it's about Wen Li uh, just loving the, the, the place in Chinatown in Vancouver, BC, that she's grown up in, uh, along Kiefer Street. And so it's a very sweet um, moment for her. She just goes through the street, enjoys seeing the people that she knows. Here on, here on I love to present a lot of the street songs in a lot of the interludes in the opera to give the essence of, you know, what we are hearing is authentic Chinatown. <laughs> I, I love singing Alice's music, particularly in Chinese, um, because Chinese is a tonal language, and so there's pitch uh, implications to the language. And um, in the past when I've sung her works, uh, particularly in Chinese, different dialects of Chinese, she's always been very sensitive to those tones in the language. What will be a challenge to audience it, audiences is the fact of the languages. Uh, it, it is, as far as we know, one of the only operas that's going to be sung in Taishanese or Hoisan, uh, as it's sometimes called. But it, 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 but it, it was, it was the truest language for this, these characters, and it was the right, it's the right choice, and, and it couldn't have been done without Paul Yi, who does the Taishanese. It feels like my whole life has, has come to, to uh, rest on this project. When I was growing up, I was raised by an aunt and uncle in Vancouver's Chinatown. And they actually ran a boarding house um, for bachelor men, um, as represented by the two male leads of the opera. As well, my uncle spoke Hoisanese at home, but my aunt spoke Cantonese. And she made a rule that when we were growing up, my brother and I, we could only speak Chinese at home because she was determined that we wouldn't lose our, our mother tongue. The Hoisan singer is like a guide. Um, she narrates what happens in the moment in her perspective in the tradition of Mokyu, where it's uh, kind of like a sing song, but it's very, um, there's a lot of flourishing and a, a, lot, a big range required as tones drop. And in fact, Hoisan, from the references I had, were all men, all male singers. So I thought it was very exciting as a female to bring that forward, to try to sing what you style as a woman. <laughs> incredible because it basically reflected a lot of my own personal story and my own personal life and it was so thrilling to even think that there would be an opera on the operatic stage that would that would look like me that would look like other people like me that would look that would show my family life that would show my history 
and it was it's I'm so privileged and so honored to be have um, to be asked to conduct the piece. You know, when we tell the story of Chinatown, it's um, it's something that's that's really personal to me. I grew up walking those streets and going to those grocery stores, and the characters that Maddie has brought to life, I can I can imagine them. I can imagine them in those places. I can imagine what they were smelling, what they might have tasted. Um, I can see my aunts and uncles uh, in the story, so I think that's really special. If we go the city. Here I am, sitting at Starbucks, approaching the score with X amount of years of diligent, straight training in the European operatic canon. And all I hear, I'm starting to hear these traditional Chinese instruments, like the arhu and the gu zheng, and I'm just like, I just, I, I immediately start to have these waves of memories of the sounds that I heard growing up in my childhood, uh, whether it was on the radio or on a, on, a, on a Chinese drama that my parents were watching. And it was just such a unique experience to be listening, to be hearing those sounds in an opera. You're seeing what happens when an extraordinary librettist and an extraordinary composer join forces. Um, you're seeing what happens when stories that have been forgotten or obscured by the passage of time are given voice again. And you're seeing what happens um, when a production team is committed to a single vision and in the service of, of these stories. And, um, you know, it's, it's important that we, we commit not only as, as producers, but as audience members to this kind of tapestry. I think it's really critical if we're going to see our communities continue to, to thrive through art uh, that all of us, in a sense, become a production team, and that includes participants. So yes, come see Chinatown, uh, because in, in doing so, you're also part of the story. Maddie has written a narrative of such distinction and created characters of such personality, and Alice has made that even more eloquent through the purely musical choices that she has made, that I believe most people will find it pretty irresistible. You will be blown away by the sets. They are really remarkable. Why should you come to this opera? Well, Chinatowns have been in the Canadian landscape since, you know, the turn of the century back in the 1900s. So it has a long, long history. But most Canadians only know Chinatown through Chinese food or Chinese New Year's. This opera is a way to immerse yourself in the people and the music of that community in a way that will touch your heart. So <laughs>